Ben Aris is the editor-in-chief of BNE Intelli News. He's also a long-serving foreign correspondent in Eastern Europe and has been covering Russia since 1993. And he joins us live now from Berlin. Ben, over the weekend, we had Ukraine's President Zelensky confirming this long-awaited counter-offensive. Not surprisingly, Russia's denying Ukrainian reports that it's liberated several villages in the Nets region. What's your assessment of the counteroffensive so far? Well, clearly, <clears throat> it's underway. It started. Um, however, we're at the very beginning, the phase one, if you like. And what's going on at the moment seems to be that they're uh, probing, the Ukrainians are probing the Russian lines. And you have to bear in mind that this is long awaited. I mean, Russians have had eight months to dig in since the Kharkiv offensive in September where they, uh, the, the Ukrainians smashed through the Russian lines and then routed the army and took back hundreds of kilometers of territory. And the Russians don't want to get caught out again. So what they've been doing in the last eight months is be building very extensive defense lines. And what the report suggests is um, they've set up is that the Ukrainians have a lightly defended first line, and then behind that is a landmine field. And then behind that is another set of trenches, much more sophisticated with um, these dragon's teeth, these uh, concrete blocks that make it difficult <coughs> to drive tanks through. And so at the moment, the Ukrainian forces are attacking down the whole line. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt that they have taken back at least half a dozen villages. Mm. But then they're just villages. They're not mm. strategic in that sense. And that we're waiting now for the main blow, the main attack to happen, that NATO um, has said they've sent, sent significant amounts of both shells, arms uh, and tanks. And we've heard a lot about the Leopard tanks, but there's in addition some 500 Soviet era tanks that were in the stockpiles of former Soviet, uh, former Warsaw Pact countries which we haven't seen. We've seen one leopard so far. Mm. And then five, how so pivotal is this counteroffensive, do you think? Is it now or key. never for Ukraine? It's key. It's absolutely key. Uh, the, the Ukrainians have to have a big success because um, they have an ammunition problem that they're undersupplied. And there is a chance that if they can deliver a hammer blow, if they can smash through the lines again and route the Russian forces, which are demoralized, and you know, there's a lot of conscripts, at least 300,000 conscripts who don't want to be there. And they could cause a catastrophic collapse of morale. And then the Russian soldiers could turn their guns on their officers and say, look, we don't want to be here. We're cannon fodder. And the whole Russian attack could collapse. Now, I think the chances of that happening are relatively low, but it's a possibility. But in more general terms, you know, Ukraine needs a success, a spectacular success to break through and, and cut off the land bridge between Rostov in Russia and, and the Crimea in order to keep Western support, Western supplies coming in so that they continue this fight. Mm, that was going to be uh, my, my last question to you. Do, some analysts have suggested that if this operation isn't successful, Western support will waver for Kyiv. Do you think that's a possibility? Absolutely. I mean, this morning there was a poll out in Poland um, saying that the Polish are getting kind of tired of all the refugees and the costs and the cost of living crisis and the energy crisis. This is all fueling. And if there's uh, an insignificant attack, if it doesn't go anywhere, then I think that fatigue will build. And there's already talk on several sides of calling for a ceasefire, that this war is unwinnable and that it's time to go to the negotiating table. But again, another poll this morning said that 86% of Ukrainians will not accept any concessions and territory whatsoever as part of a peace talk. And getting back the Donbass, getting back the Crimea, these, these are enormous tasks mm. and very, very difficult. And so it, we could easily end up in a situation where the West pushes Ukraine towards the negotiating table by the end of the summer if the attack doesn't go well. So as I say, the attack is key. And we will obviously be monitoring it just as closely. Ben Aris, thank you for your analysis there out of Berlin.